from that very general introduction, we'll focus in on the question of theory of mind and uh, uh, Sarah Schafsma, um, an uh, excellent postdoc from the Netherlands, uh, bears part of the blame. Uh, uh, my perspective is that uh, science tends to proceed uh, from the simple to the complex. And uh, um, 50 years ago and more ago, a scientist did an excellent job uh, of uh, analyzing neurophysiological reflexes, especially spinal reflexes, with uh, techniques and with concepts of considerable uh, physical and, and chemical detail. And 50 years ago, the notion of attacking problems of social behavior with similar techniques would have seemed ludicrous. And yet now, 50 years later, we have a journal called uh, Social, Cognitive, and Effective Neuroscience, which I thought Ralph uh, actually invented, but it turns out uh, he edited it for a while and he, he's not connected with it now. And so the question is, uh, what have we paid for uh, during these uh, 50 years of advance? And I have to offer the perspective that uh, characteristic, one characteristic of hard science uh, is precision of definition. You can't get any place without precise definitions, whereas with a theory of mind, there's been a certain vagueness in its use. So Sarah Schafsma and I went back over a lot of papers uh, since the original paper of, of Premack and Woodruff in 1978, and we said, uh, we noticed tremendous variety of the use of the phrase from paper to paper. Some uh, papers emphasize cognitive elements, uh, some emotional elements, uh, cognitive and emotional empathy, uh, some concentrated on methodology uh, with a re uh, with emphasis on the cognitive aspect of false belief, others concentrated on methodology with the emotional element, the emotion in the eyes, and some papers were heavily philosophical. Uh, some of those philosophical ones, for example, would have come from uh, the American linguist Jerry Fodor. Others would have come from the Austrian um, um, uh, Perner. Uh, but the question is, can't we settle on a solid definition and, and know exactly what it is that we're talking about? So the meeting reflects uh, two approaches to the explanation of behavior. Uh, suppose um, uh, we're trying to explain uh, behavior X, which is a social behavior in which an individual is acting with knowledge of the intent of another individual. Well, there are two, two ways to explain that behavior. One is to find out how it evolves uh, through time, uh, over here, um, and uh, explain the behavior with, with evolutionary thinking. Another approach is to uh, uh, study contemporaneous brain mechanisms, the way a person like me does, uh, in which you're studying mechanisms that, be, that are explain the behavior at time t. And in making these two arrows, uh, I'm not constructing a false dichotomy, um, uh, because after all, what evolves is actually the brain mechanisms that will run the behavior at time t. Uh, it's just the case that the, the kinds of scientists who go out in the wild and study animals in their natural environment don't tend to be the kinds of scientists who do what I do, which is to study laboratory animals chopping up animal brains and studying their physical and uh, biochemical mechanisms. So this, mo this meeting includes both uh, of these approaches. <laughs> <laughs>